Hello guys, this is Space Hobbies here. About 15 or so minutes ago, I uh, looked at the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 reveal trailer. And this is going to be my opinions, my reactions, and my impressions, and essentially feedback on what I thought about the reveal trailer. Um... Let's start with the good, uh, because that's always a good thing to do. Um, looked good. I, uh, I wouldn't say it looks as good as Advanced Warfare, but, uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't look bad. Um, I am kind of interested in the game. That I will straight out tell you. Um, I had Black Ops 1, or Black Ops, uh, which was set in 1960s. Um, and uh, while that one was, I don't know, kind of, kind of okay, um, I like Black Ops 2. I, I never owned it, never played it, but I liked Black Ops 2 because it was set in the future. It was, I think, 2025, 20, 26, something like that, it was setting. And while well, I love me a World War II Call of Duty, um, it is nice to have some, some futuristic sci-fi-like scenarios. But I'm... And then this is going on the bad hill. I am worried that Call of Duty is going uh, to go down a path where they just keep going farther and farther and farther into the future. My main concern lies in that that seems to be what they're doing. In which every new installment, they seem to push it a little more into the future. And what that makes me feel is that eventually what we'll have is like a Halo Call of Duty, where it's like 26, you know, Century 26, you know, where it's like 20, you know, 25, 66. And, you know, we got like interplanetary warships and, and, and plasma rifles, and we're fighting aliens and not Koreans or Russians or whatever. You know, in a weird way, what I was hoping uh, Black Ops would do would be a alternative history because that I think would have I think that would be a really cool idea uh, for Call of Duty. Call of Duty has always, uh, for me, has always been about making really cool stories, and I would love. To play a game where history was rewritten and where a particular set of things happened that changed the outcome of battles or changed the outcome of an entire war. Like, what if we had a Call of Duty that was set in World War II but in which, uh, Adolf Hitler predicted that we would invade Normandy where we invaded Normandy and so the invasion of D-Day fails and we have a Call of Duty that is set in a universe in which Adolf Hitler repel, basically fought against the invasion of D-Day succeeded somehow and then conquered England. England falls and then we have an invasion of Germans, Italians, and Japanese on the continental United States in which the game is kind of like a home front call of duty in where you have a resistance group 
where you jump from resistant groups from, I don't know, like New York, and then you jump to, you know, maybe Florida, maybe you have like a resistance, you know, group that are doing missions in Florida. Um, I, I would like to see a Call of Duty do that. But, uh, as in, my, my, I can't talk right now. My impressions of Call of Duty Black Ops 3, I am intrigued. I will say that I am intrigued by the game. I won't say that I would definitely buy it, but I am definitely going to keep my eye out on news uh, about the game because I am intrigued. Um, you know, I kind of wish... That the reveal, tra you know, the reveal today was like a, a section of the game, and and what we got right now is nice. I I'm not complaining, but I kind of wish that you that we got a, you know, I don't know, like a small segment of a level, you know, just a taste of what the story is. You know, so I guess that's the one thing I kind of am disappointed with is that I kind of wish that we had more of an idea what the story was. Um, you know, what factions and what's going on in the story. Um, and what we really got was a reveal which shows the game, and again, it looks really nice. I wouldn't say, you know, Advanced Warfare nice, but it definitely looks nice. Um, now, I don't know if I'm just seeing things in the trailer, but it looked like we had, like, robots. Like, mechanized, bipedal, battle robots. And, again, I only saw the, the trailer one. Uh, one time, so I might just be seeing things, but that's what I thought it looked like. It looked like we had robotic bipedal battle robots that will on the battlefield. I don't know what my opinion, if that is in fact the case, where we have these bipedal robotic battle robots or or whatever. Now, in terms of the soldiers and the concept that we are going to essentially genetically, well, I would say genetically, we uh, modified our bodies to be better. Now, I, I want to go back to the trailer before this reveal trailer. Because I liked what that did. What it did was it showed a timeline in which these modifications got, you know, progressively worse. And I think that is a really interesting way of showing that just because we can do something doesn't mean we should. And in that trailer, which I think is called the Embo trailer, uh, it started in 1998 or 99, and what it basically was was um, athletes taking drugs to enhance their abilities, and the ethic, uh, the ethics of doing that, and. Then it got progressively worse where we were now not taking drugs, but basically taking body parts and adding mechanical legs and arms and thus improving attributes that gave us a advantage over those that did not have these enhancements and the ethics of... Uh, a world where you have people that are wanting 
on robotic bipedal legs that are capable of essentially going indefinitely because the the robotic legs they're not muscles they don't get tired so is it fail to allow a, an individual with robotic legs to race in marathons against people with human legs biological organic legs legs that will get tired legs that can cramp legs that can fail versus if this leg breaks you just take that leg off and add a new robotic leg and it's as good as new so I like that and I hope that Black Ops 3 really looks at the ethics of you know of that I don't think they will but I think that would be a really cool idea if somewhere in the story that is hinted somewhere in like the subtext is just because we can do something should we do it should we enhance ourselves in such a way as to give us a unfair advantage compared to everyone else and you know these enhancements are only going to be for those with financial means. So the third world nations, they ain't going to have these advantages. They ain't going to be able to buy these uh, mechanical legs and arms that allow us to have these advantages. And I know that I am going way beyond the reveal trailer. But <laughs> these are my impressions and that's what I want to talk about. Is my impressions and my opinions. And, you know, I am intrigued. I am, I am very much intrigued by the game. Intrigued by the premise. I'm intrigued by its potential. I'm very much a uh, game to see what happens when we actually got get a reveal gameplay, an actual segment, which I would imagine will be at E3. I hope um, we can get something by then at least. Um, where we can see at least some gameplay, where people are actually playing the game. That said, um, I think that's about it. That said, um, I'll be waiting for the next big reveal of the game. Um, as a big time Call of Duty player and fan, um, I always look forward to the yearly releases. I always try to keep up to date with what is going on in terms of Call of Duty. Now, as a fan, I'm not going to be like, it's untouchable. No, I'm not that kind of fan. I'm not, you know, mal you know, foaming at the mouth, defending it. But... Those who say that Call of Duty is the same game over and over and over again, they've never played more than one Call of Duty. You really should play more than one Call of Duty before you say that. I want you to play Call of Duty 4. Then I want you to play Black Ops 2. And while you're at it, then play Advanced Warfare. Then tell me how those three games are exactly the same. Because, I mean, that's what people constantly keep telling me, is why are people buying these games? They're the same every year. Play Card 4. Play Modern Warfare 2. Play Modern Warfare 3. Play Black Ops 1, 2, eventually 3. Play World at War, and then Advanced Warfare. Play more than one Call of Duty game. Probably not one in a series. Like, play Modern Warfare 2. Play World at War, then play Advanced Warfare. They're not the same game. They are completely different games. And, and so my position on anybody that says Call of Duty is the same every year, what I would like to tell you is if you're going to say that about Call of Duty, you should not exclude Battlefield. Because Battlefield essentially since, uh, what? Battlefield, Bad Company, 
the big selling point in Battlefield games was that you could destroy shit. And what and I will say that Battlefield does have a interesting appeal. It is always nice to see these outrageous, retardedly ridiculous, beyond reasonable stunts that people do. Well, they basically are going up in the sky 90 degrees, then they eject, take a sniper rifle, or shoot the pilot of the you know in the airplane, then essentially just parachute over and then get into the airplane. And then people be like, Battlefield, you know, Battlefield games are more realistic. More realistic, my ass. I would love to see you try to jump out of a, uh, an F-16 going at like 500 miles a fucking hour. You try and shoot a sniper rifle. And then somehow teleport into the airplane. Yeah, that's realistic, my ass. And while I admit, Battlefield has way more interesting battles because you can, you know, destroy things, you know, and things happen that are way cooler than anything we get. I mean, think about it. Well, what was it? Battlefield, uh, Battlefield 4, I think. There was a skyscraper that collapses. The most that we get in Call of Duty is that a wave comes and, like, Slightly modifies like one fifth of the map. You know? <laughs> so, I, I give it to Battlefield guys. You have that. You have that shit happens that is way colder than anything that happens on Battlefield games. That said, we have changed a significantly lot more. I mean, really, let, let's think about it. What is the big change that Battlefield recently has done? They went from a military game to a cops and wobbles game. That was the big change. That was what changed in Battlefield games. They went from military to cops. Everything else is essentially the exact same. They just changed... It from military to cops. What has Call of Duty done? Well, it went from World War II to modern day to the Cold War to the future. And I think in that exact order. And again, in case people have forgot, I did just, you know, I threw out, I think at the beginning of this, an idea for a new Call of Duty game, in which an alternative history. It doesn't have to be, you know, Nazi, Nazi, uh, Germany invading America, but I think it would be cool to have an alternative what-if game, um, in which events changed, and we didn't win the war, or we lost the war, we won, and you know, what uh, what comes from that defeat. Um, I know that Wolfenstein, that new one that I, th I think is so-so, um, did something very similar. But, I think Call of Duty would really be an interesting franchise to do a what-if story. And, especially, you know, in, you know, any future installment. So, when Black Ops, the Black Ops series is over, hey, maybe you can start a new series on this concept of alternative history. You know, what if we, we uh, set it way in the future, where we have developed the means of time travel, and then someone goes back in time and modifies history, and thus... What you know as reality has been vastly changed. I don't know. Um, I think people that you know make games uh, can definitely uh, think about it. That that's always been one of my uh, ideals. Uh, is I would love to play a game that is set in a alternative what if scenario. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I kind of rambled on. I probably sounded somewhat insane with my rambles. 
But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and have a nice day.